In this video, we're going to set up the list of past questions, and we're simply going to do this by listing out all the questions and answers and the date that they were asked for each user. So let's get started. In the last video, we set up Cloud Firestore to save our questions and answers. And in this video, we're going to display the history of questions and answers in a list view, which is going to be a completely different page, which will be accessible by this icon up here. So let's first start and create that new view, which we're going to name the history view. And this is going to be a stateful widget. And of course, we will need to import material. For the view state here, instead of returning a container, we're going to return a scaffold. And within the scaffold, we'll set the app bar's title. to be the text of past decisions. Then for the body, which we are going to want to use a safe area, we can for now just keep a container for the child. Now let's link from the home page to our history view so we can see that this is working correctly. So back in the home page, you're going to want to find the actions where we have our action for the icon of history. And right now the on tapped is simply blank. So we're just going to add a call to navigator push and we'll push that material page route. And the builder here is going to be the history view. And we will need to give this the context here. So if you refresh your app and click on the history view icon, you can see it says past decisions as we would expect. And you can go back and forth between this page. Pretty simple stuff here, but that is linked up now. So back in the history view, we need to actually get the data from Firestore to create this list here. So the first thing we can do is define a list in our history view state and it will be a list of, we can just do a generic object list right now. And we'll call this the history list. Now that we have this history list, we can create a function that is actually going to fill it with some data from Firestore. So let's create a function down here and it's actually going to be returning a future since we are going to be getting that data from Firebase. And we'll call this get users questions list, I suppose. So right here, we're going to want to make that call to Firebase, make sure that this is asynchronous as well. And now we can define the user's UID, which again, I've discussed in past videos, which is being displayed right down here, which is just the Firebase auth user ID. And if you remember correctly, the database is set up to have this user collection and then the UID is the document. And then this document contains this specific users, all their data. So anyway, we need to get that UID right here so we can define that as a final. And right now we can get that UID by calling our auth service. And then we can just call current user and UID. And remember that this is null safety. So we do need to make sure that that question mark is there because potentially the current user could be null. Now that we have the UID, we can actually make the call to get all of this user's questions. And we'll set that as a variable called data. And that's going to be the asynchronous call to Firebase. So we need to get a Firebase instance and then we'll get our collection, which is the user's collection. And then we'll look for the document of that user's ID. And then within that, there's going to be the collection for the questions and it's called questions.
And with these questions, we want to order them by the date that they were asked. So currently they're just going to be ordered randomly by, I believe it's just alphabetical by the ID of the document. But since this is random, these are gonna kind of get out of order. So we can add a order clause here to order them by the date. And the field we want to use is going to be this created field. And we're going to want to make that descending true so that the most recent one is at the top of the list. And after calling the order there, all we need to do is call get, and this will get us the snapshot of that data. So we're going to have that data as this data variable here. And once we have that, we can go ahead and set the state of our history list and we're going to set that equal to a list here and it's going to be a list and we're going to cast it from this data and we're going to take this data which is a query snapshot and we want to get the documents from this query snapshot so we can call docs on it and then once we do that we're going to actually map each one of these documents into an actual question object. So we don't actually quite have that set up in our question object yet. So if you go into the models, the question right here, this is what we ultimately want the data to be formatted as. So we're going to pull each of these two questions from Firebase and create a question object with that data. You can add a quick helper function here that is going to convert the query snapshot data to an actual question object. Similar to what we're doing here, it's just gonna be the reverse order. So this one we're going to be creating a question from a query snapshot. So we're going to call this from snapshot. This is going to take a parameter which will be that snapshot. So this will represent the document from Firebase. And this is a bit of a shorthand way to write it, but we're going to just define each of these variables now. So the query is going to equal the snapshots data query parameter. So if we call data here, and then the data will be essentially looking like this now, and we're going to want that query parameter there. We're going to do a similar thing for the answer. And lastly, the created. Since the created is a date time, we do need to actually convert that to a date object here. So don't forget to do that or else this will error. But now that we have this from snapshot, we can create a question from a snapshot by passing it a document snapshot. So if we go back into our history view, right here we have all these documents. So we want to go through each of the documents that we have. And in this case, we currently have two. And we want to create a question for each of those documents. So the quickest way to do this is actually to use map. And map is going to go through each of the items in this that we're calling map on. So it's going to go through each of the documents and allow us to perform a function on each of those documents. So each of those documents will be represented by this doc here, and you can name that whatever you want. It's kind of just a placeholder variable. And then you can say what you want to perform on each of those documents. So we want to create the question from the snapshot. And then we're going to need to pass it that snapshot. So it's going to be that document there the question is going to need to be imported that package but once that's done you can add that semicolon and now we should have our history list as a list of questions so the last thing to do now is actually to display this list in a list view builder so up here where we have this container we're going to replace this now with a list view builder and the item count of this is going to be just the count of our history list. So we can just call length on that. And then we're going to have our item builder. 
and this will have the context here as well as an index. So the builder, we're going to actually want to build out a card that has the question and the answer. But for right now, just to make sure that our list is populating with two values, let's just return the index here as a text value. And then if this once this is working, we will build out that card. So if you save this and look, there's actually nothing loaded. And that's because we're never calling this get user question list, which means we're never setting the history list to anything. So we're going to set this in the did change dependencies override. So right above the build method, we can override the did change dependencies and simply call this get user question list. Since we're calling this in did change dependencies, it is going to unwrap that future essentially. And once the future returns, it's going to set the state of this history list. So this is kind of a nice way to get data that is returned from a future without having to use a future builder. But if you save this now, and we will need to go back to the main page and then enter here, You'll see we now have zero one, which is expected because we have two items in our list here that are being displayed. So now we need to build the card actually that we're going to display this data in. And we can create that actually as a new file. So in our views, let's create a new package and we're just going to call this the helpers. And now we'll create a new Dart file and this will be the question card. This one will be a state list widget and it's going to be called the question card and we will have to import material there. Now this state list widget for the question is going to take a parameter which is going to be a question and we'll just call this the question. We will need to import the question package as well so that we have access to the question model now we need to create a quick initializer for this. So question card is going to be initialized with a question. And now within the build method here, we'll keep this container and the child element of it, we will make a card. So within this card, we want to just display the question and the answer and the date it was asked. Let me actually write this all out and then I'll just go over it because I think it is kind of pretty basic. So no need to type it all out here. All right, so this is all we need. We have a column with two rows. This first row has a little bit of padding and then it just has should I with the question and we'll actually add a question mark there as well. This is essentially what we're doing on the home page when we're asking the question down in this area. And then we have another row, which is going to give the answer to the question as text, and it's going to be formatted a little bit bolder. So it'll be a little bit of a bolder font there. Again, that's pretty similar to what we're doing on the home page for the question that's asked down below. Lastly, we're going to have a bit of space, and then we're going to have the date that the question was asked, and we're formatting the date here with this date formatter. And all you have to do to use this is to pass in the date that you want formatted, which is the created date from our question object. Another thing to know is we are making use of that capitalize extension that we created a few videos back. So that is nice as well. But now we can use this question card here in our history view list builder. So back in the history view, instead of returning this text here, we can now return a question card. And the question card is going to need to be import. And then the question card does have that one parameter, which is a question. So we can get that question by getting the history list index, which since the history list is all questions, we can pass that index in. And then we're just going to need to typecast this as a question, I believe. And if we save this, you'll see we now have a simple list view here where we get the question and we get the answer. If we go back and ask a new question, which can be just anything and hit ask, it's going to answer our question there, put it in Firebase. And if we go to our history view, you'll see we do get that test question right up at the top.
If you aren't aware, this video is just one of a series of videos that are going to show you how to build an entire app. And the app that it's gonna be building is all focused around monetization. So the parts that you're gonna be able to see on YouTube for free are going to be that base app, and this is part of that. But if you wanna see all the ways you can monetize a Flutter app, which include ads, in-app purchases and subscriptions, then you can check out the course. If you're interested in that, you can head on over to onemanstartup.com slash monetize, and it will be a 15% discount. You just use the code YouTube subscriber when you are checking out. All that will be linked down below. Ciao for now.